episode of Odyssey Life. Uh, as you can see, we're in the Odyssey Life workshop. And today, we got an exciting episode for you. In fact, I wrote some notes. Okay, first I'd like to thank all the new people that subscribed. Uh, last weekend, we expanded our subscriber base by like 1200%, okay? Doesn't sound like much, yeah it does. We went from three to almost 30 subscribers in a week. Uh, I'm ex super, super stoked about that. Um, and also comments, thank you for the encouraging words. Um, it does take a lot to start a YouTube channel. In fact, one of the, one of the comments was a question um, asked, how hard is it to start a YouTube channel? Well, it's not hard. You just have to have a desire and a good camera or smartphone um, and uh, a project and you can get started. Uh, me, it took about a year of planning and that was just to get most of everything in order to have the content on a weekly basis to make a channel. So that I'm extremely grateful. Um, I look forward to this every week. I do work a full-time job um, for those that weren't or haven't watched the uh, second video, uh, uh, Powder Coating Day. Um, I work 11 hours a day, four days a week, and then hopefully on Fridays we do work overtime. Um, and I'll so soak that up because the more money I make out there, the more I can invest in the channel and growing the channel. Um, and speaking of growing the channel, uh, please uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to be posting a link in the description uh, of a future video for when we get an Odyssey Life Facebook page. I am currently right now in the process of getting that set up so I can post, uh, you know, quick short videos or updates or anything that you guys might want to know or a place for you guys to go hang out, throw around some ideas on some future uh, videos, you know, and maybe pass them along to me. So anyway, for all the new people that have just subscribed, thank you. Uh, please let all your friends and family know that Odyssey Life is a, you know, up and coming YouTube channel and we really like the support. Okay. Number two, uh, actually this, this uh, number two actually comes from a comment on one of the Odyssey forums that I belong to. A man had asked, because uh, I guess I was sending out a mixed signal in my uh, Facebook post where I was saying, uh, come and support my you know, restoration and then using resto mod at the same time. And there's a big distinction between restoration and resto mod. You know, uh, if you know, doing a restoration, uh, I believe it's returning something to its original order and resto mod is restoration with modification. So that's why you see our factory fuel tank sitting here. Uh, okay, when I removed the engine, I didn't know this because you obviously can't shake your gas tank, um, but I don't know if you guys can hear that on the camera, but from what I can see, there's a baffle on the inside of this tank and it had rusted loose. And I noticed when I brought it home last year, I placed an inline fuel filter, a new one, and I was noticing a lot of sediment and rust and whatnot. So that would explain why. So I had purchased a five gallon, eight by 24 inch aluminum gas tank that I was gonna powder coat blue to match the seat and we were gonna hang it. And I actually already filmed that episode. I filmed the episode of me going out, mocking up the tank, uh, going to work. I had to uh, modify the straps to be able to hang it where the air box, uh, the upper air box and a uh, rear brake light one, you know, uh, is mounted. And I had to scrap it all because this gentleman asked me if I was gonna go original or modify. I didn't have any plans on doing anything um, as far as modification other than uh, the engine, exhaust, carburetor, and uh, air intake. You know, all that stuff I was going to modify, but as far as the overall look and everything, I was just going to spruce it up, uh, you know, maybe get a couple new things or, you know, as close to OEM as I could, uh, redo the rims, maybe get some new tires. We're definitely going to uh, spring the money for some works shocks in the future here. Uh, steelies to be exact dual rate uh, but to outfit the whole odyssey it's like almost $1,700 so 
takes a minute to put that kind of money together if you're starting from scratch. So um, I am, we are going to take this tank to work. It's gonna be probably the next episode or the episode after. We're gonna be cutting this tank open. Um, I was looking for the best place to do that to where we would be able to get inside, sandblast the inside, see how bad the rust is, and then weld it back together and then powder coat the inside, actually the whole entire tank. Uh, I did a lot of research online, Googled it, see what I could find, and powder coating is impervious to uh, petroleum products, gasoline, oil, and whatnot. So it would be a great protectant for the inside of our tank. But first we gotta get in there, we gotta get the old baffle removed, see how bad the rust is on the inside. I know the baffle was probably made out of thinner material than the actual tank. And I've done a tap test, we don't have any holes or anything leaking or coming through. So potentially this tank is salvageable. Um, I think two of the comments uh, a gentleman did mention another gentleman's name that is supposed to have all the parts. Uh, he's supposed to be the, uh, you know, the go-to guy for hard to reach Odyssey parts. Um, I did reach out to him. He did get back to me and told me to call him back. He's in the Pacific time zone. I'm in the Eastern. And just the time that he wanted me to call, I'm in bed way at, way like way after he wanted me to call or way before he wanted me to call. So um, I haven't reached out to him yet. So anyway, yes, as far as the body, the chassis, uh, everything, we're going to go straight 100% original because all the, all the components are there. Everything's there. It's already 100% original. I mean, even down to the original, uh, I think it, the headlight frame protectors, there's these little rubber covers that cover the frame of the headlights to keep them from getting rusted. They're still in place. Uh, everything is still in place. So anything that can be pulled off, spruced up, um, is going to get done. Uh, as I said, shocks. I have a new air intake. It's going to uh, replace the uh, factory air box. We're going to upgrade the carburetor to a 39 millimeter Kenai uh, D slide chrome car or chrome slide D. Yeah, D slide chrome car. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I was fortunate enough to find a 36, uh, 36 through 39 millimeter. Uh, uh, intake manifold for that carburetor and we're going to do a DG exhaust uh, and not the extreme exhaust that's uh, always uh, out of stock everywhere that sells it. If you go straight to the DG website, DG exhaust in California, they will, like you order their national pipe, it's just a clear coat, straight stainless steel, it's not uh, chromed, but they have a jig and they just build you an exhaust and ship it to you. It's uh, four hundred dollars for the Odyssey, and we're going to be doing that. So, okay, so that was the fuel tank, and so today's video. Today's video is. Let me set this to the side. It's front brakes. We are going to be re or yeah, front brakes. I was thinking disc, rear brakes. Uh, we're going to be doing the rear brakes on the Odyssey today. Uh, we did order brakes off of eBay. Uh, they do say they fit for Honda FL 350R and it's funny because they always put 85 to 87 but there was nothing between 85 and 89 I don't believe or 86 to 89 I had, I'm pretty sure they only made the FL 350 for 85 and I think they came out with the 489 if I'm not mistaken you guys can just comment bleep as a uh, vice grip garage says bleep bloop it into the comments uh, but yeah, go ahead, throw it in the comments. Let me know. I'm not. Uh, I mean, when I bought this machine, I knew nothing except that I loved it. Okay, all this stuff right here, this is all new to me. Everything was, uh, you know, first time. So when we go out to do the brakes, we're going to be doing them for the first time together. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you the maintenance manual that I use because it's on my phone and I'm using the phone to make the video but I actually downloaded the FL 350 maintenance manual that is in my drive on my computer and I can just simply start at page one to I think page almost 300 and it's just the whole the whole entire manual. You can zoom in, it gives you all your torque specs, uh, measurements, um, 
how to run your fuel lines, the brake lines, all the lubrication points, uh, uh, what types of fluids you should use. And in that case, uh, it does use either, it says either a dot three or dot four. We got dot three brake fluid. Um, and I believe all we need is a, it's, it looked like a nine or a 10 millimeter uh, wrench. I haven't gone, I haven't actually started it yet. I just quickly glanced at it. And I did put together a, a I'm Alone self bleeder bottle that I saw on a, a couple other YouTube channels like Mortski uses one, Puddin uses one. Uh, you know, it's just basically, I used a ranch dressing bottle with a length of fuel hose, put it down to the bottom. I'm gonna dump some of our dot three in, I'm gonna compress the piston on the caliper. Uh, and then since I don't have anybody to help me with the bleeding, I'll stick the other end of the hose over the bleeder nipple, pump the brakes, air will stop coming out, suck fluid in, we'll have blood brakes. So, okay, I guess uh, you'll see me out in the Odyssey Life portable shed slash workshop, and we're going to get this job done. Again, thanks for tuning in, thanks for supporting. See you in a few. We're out the Odyssey Life workshop slash portable shed from Harbor Freight and we're sitting behind the Odyssey right now as you can see it is a beautiful day out today I love fall I love the change of colors like everything's so vibrant the blues are just amazing I was out on a drive today got to see the leaves change and I'm just I'm so stoked for fall I love sweatshirt and jean weather and bonfires got my uh, cup of joe sitting there we got everything all set up. I did want to tell you, uh, got some brake clean here. I know, I know some guys on YouTube, they just go through this stuff. We're going to see how it works. Um, I like to be organized, get all my stuff set up. So I wanted to come in here, let you see what we're doing. This is the emergency brake. This is uh, the caliper bolts right here. This is the bleeder nipple. This is the brake hose. The caliper is right on the inside right here, or the piston. We're gonna remove these two bolts. Gonna compress the piston, take the pads out, put the new ones in. They are centered brake pads. Will somebody please let me know what centered means? Are they the grooves in the middle? Uh, there were carbon uh, brake pads, there were non-metallic. I got the centered ones. I don't know. Let me know. Did I do the right thing? So this is what we're going to do. And is why we're doing it is I'm going to spin around. I want you to see. Oop, there goes my coffee. Always cooking something over. I wanted to check to see if the piston moved. So I pulled the emergency brake and it did nothing. I could push the Odyssey. So then I... Let me move you up and see if you can see that. Oops, it's the other one. I don't know if we can see that piston moving or not, but earlier when I was filming the gas tank issue, I noticed that there was no emergency brake and basically the piston was almost all the way out. So. That's our caliper. And so you know it's on the it's on the passenger side, back rear of the engine, right next to the drive shaft, but it's really easy to get to. There's nothing in the way. So we're going to uh go ahead and I did uh, memorize the torque specs, especially for this set screw for the emergency brake, needs to be torqued to 14 foot pounds. So all right, well, let me get you set up. We're gonna get these brakes done. All right, guys, so we need a 14 millimeter wrench to get to the back caliper bolts. There is a whole brake. There is a whole, uh, it looks like there's a, a brake mounting bracket right here that also has two bolts, but you don't want to touch that. You want to do the two outer uh, 14 millimeter uh, bolts. I wanted, we also got a new torque wrench today from Harbor Freight. 
it's a two it's a 20 uh, torque range 20 to 200 inch pounds which is good for everything we need for when we get our engine back for all the stuff we'll have to put back on all the covers because we I, sh I stripped it down to just the bare block so we'll have to put all that back together plus the exhaust and all that stuff so but we'll cover that in a future episode so let's get this done uh, I'm really excited about the brakes it's always good you know brakes are underrated on most shows because people are just bored but they're very important if you haven't ever ridden one of these machines you'll know why I'm worried about the brakes this machine at speed will peel your face back it is so fast and we're getting a brand new board you know worked engine back with you know and it's gonna be breathing free so I just can't imagine it's gonna peel your skull off too so we're gonna need good brakes so we're gonna remove these two bolts now, I didn't have to put any kind of uh, penetration oil on here in fact I didn't even bring any out uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not when I brought you over here to show you what was going on down here. This still has the bleeder. Oh man, I forgot the... I'll have to go inside and get some stuff. It's going to be the first time we get to test the fast forward on the editing app. Uh, the time lapse for when I have to get up and go get something. <laughs> I was going to get a set of ratchet wrenches today, but it's not in the budget right now. I'm just struggling to get a video made. Uh, every week just to get started and I'm by no means complaining I'm happy happy with where we're at and these are some these are some pretty husky brake bolts here and we're not gonna be able to well, maybe we will I don't think we're gonna be able to get it out past our uh, emergency brake cable here uh, or the emergency brake bracket so we're just gonna back it off move it out of the way real quick and that I believe is a yeah that's a 12 millimeter and I know the torque specs for that bolt are 14 foot-pounds so we'll be able that's your emergency brake uh, they say you shouldn't have any more than, I think, three to five millimeters of uh, play in your emergency brake. I'm not trying to have any, so here we go. Here's our number one, the bottom caliper bolt. Now, when I took, when I removed or loosened up the emergency brake, uh, um, the inside nut, I was able to pull the bracket off and move it out of the way to actually get uh, that bolt, the bottom bolt out. You'll see when you do yours what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get 14 millimeter. Well, oh, there it is. I thought I lost the arbor for that. I think that's what that's called. An arbor. Looks like you have to take the emergency brake bracket off too. Sorry about that, guys. And that one is also a 12 millimeter wrench. And that's just two bolts on the outside. I'm assuming this is what you have to do. I, as I said. Uh, in the Odyssey Life Workshop, I've never done this before, so we're both we're we're both doing this together. And I appreciate you're here, or appreciate that you're here because I'd be freaking out right now. So I appreciate your company. 
now just to speed it up a little bit, I'm gonna grab a 12 millimeter socket. Get the second emergency brake bolt out. Here we go, and they're very, these bolts are very distinguishable from one another, so you can't get them, you can't get them mixed up. All right, there we go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's nothing to it. All there is is a mechanical piston on the inside of this that when you pull the emergency brake, it pushes another uh, nubbin right here, which then pushes the piston out for your emergency brake. Um, well, guys, it looks like you also have to take off. You have to take off the bracket too. Uh, we're just learning something new today, aren't we? bolts are on there. Sorry about the noise. Wow. All right. Well, the top one came undone. Let's pull that one out. Now, also, the brake caliber mounting bolts, or the bracket mounting bolts, are not, uh, they're easily distinguishable from your actual caliper bolts because the caliper bolts, the threads are on the top and the stud is at the bottom, as opposed to this is just a, basically a basic uh, uh, tempered uh, bolt with the threads at the bottom. So, but we'll still keep them separated. All right, let's hammer on this some more. Let's try hammering it in for a second. Other than some lug nuts, I've never used this uh, Bauer this Bauer uh, impact gun on anything. I did actually, I popped the flywheel off the engine with this and it came off no problem. That and the, uh, the pulley that's on the engine uh, came off also with, uh, with a clutch puller from Odd ATV. Everything I ordered from that guy is fantastic. Odd ATV, if you want uh, hard to get Odyssey parts, he's getting kind of thin on inventory I hope hopefully he uh, tops tops his inventory up and gets us some more hard to get parts. Uh, we're gonna try another socket. Not that it's the socket's problem, but uh, I don't want to break that one. wrench and a cheater bar. <laughs> Give me a minute. Yeah, most caliper bolts have reverse threads. And you're right. I'm pretty sure. But in this case, they are lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. We grab the blaster. Because that's going to be important, I believe. Let's move our stuff so we don't get it all over. Is there a hole in the back? Yes. So we'll let that sit for a second. In the meantime, let's open up our let's open up our new our new torque wrench. Never owned a torque wrench before. So it's our first time. I guess I was never serious about anything to whether I actually cared or whether it, you know, it was done right. This I wanted, I want it done right. Uh, you know, 
for us simple people, I know for a fact, this is going to be in my my family uh, through me to my nephew, and hopefully he enjoys it, and we instill the uh, the responsibility that it takes to maintain a family heirloom and appreciate it for days to come. So, let's see. Okay, that's pretty nifty. Comes with a little Pittsburgh Certificate of Calibration. It says uh, plus or minus 4% accuracy. Uh, it met or exceed our plus or 4% accuracy requirement. And then it gives you a quick, tight torque wrench guide. Yeah, it's pretty nifty. Set it for what you want, lock it on the bottom, and you're set. Right now, we're set to put that uh, emergency brake setting back where, it, back where it's supposed to go. So, all right, we put some blaster on there. Let's see if we can get this pig out. Just giving it little love taps here on the aluminum housing uh, I'm not going crazy with a five pound sledge I'm just giving it some vibrational taps to go on top of the vibration from the uh, impact wrench so let's keep at it sorry about the noise wrenching is noisy business <laughs> there we go see a little patience a little persistence Got her. And I'm going to assume because of the residue on these bolts that they were properly Loctited, which we will probably do the same because I have some red Loctite to use um, on these. So. Alrighty. Here is our brake caliper mounting bracket. Um, it is in very good shape. Uh, these outer uh, seals or um, grommets that the bolts ride through are in good shape. All right. And to get the, the caliper off, you just pull it towards you and swoop it up. So, all right, yep. Yeah. They're not terrible, but they definitely need, uh... in fact, I'm going to take the caliper off so I can show you. Uh, the caliper, to get the brake hose off, that is a 12 millimeter. I know I have the 12 sitting here somewhere. There it is. don't want to lose anything all right guys Ooh, got a little bit of brake fluid coming out which is expected let me get a rag real quick we got our rag so I'm just gonna go ahead wipe this up Now, we do have a little bit of uh, scoring on our piston, and that bothers me. So, before driving it home, I'd really like to, I'd really like to clean it up. 
I'd like to clean our piston up, but we just keep le leaking brake fluid. Let me get it all out. So we it can stop dripping on me. Because I'm going to compress the, we'll have to compress the piston, but I want to see how I go about taking this apart and if I can without ruining yeah see I don't have a rebuild kit so I don't want to ruin the um, I don't want to I don't want to ruin the gaskets so let me go ahead let me have a vape real quick Some good RSO uh, Pineapple Express. My day goes best with a little Pineapple Express, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, compress this piston. Let me get my screwdriver. Uh, yeah, I'm retarded. <laughs> you gotta remember to open the bleeder screw. Or actually, that shouldn't matter since I have the brake hose off, the brake line. But we'll do it anyway, just, just to be on the safe side. Oh, this slippery bleeder uh, nipple cover. There we go. And the nipple for the bleeder is a, a eight millimeter. There we go. And put your screwdriver in between the two pads. Oops. Well, they're coming slowly but surely. In fact, give me a second. I have a I have a uh, C clamp inside. Well, bad news. I don't think I don't think our C clamp is is oh wait. Yes, it is. Just barely big enough. I just have to compress it a little bit more. All right. Let me sit back down with you here. I got to see how these pads are held in here. Okay, the pads are held in by, and of course I don't have any, oh, here we go. Uh, the pads are held in by a hex head, it looks like. A threading screw that goes all the way through to the other side and if you could see right here in fact you can see it on the new brake shoes or pads I'll show you in a second hold on This impact's really, really coming in handy. See how long that is? 
Now watch. Our pads are coming right out. And yeah, they're definitely down to... They said the service limit is between... Once they get below two millimeter, uh, they're toast. And our caliper, or I mean our rotor, actually looks surprisingly brand new. It looks really good. We'll have to take some, uh, we'll have to take some brake clean and uh, get ourselves a clean rag and clean that up. But in the meantime, let's get our let's get our piston pushed in all the way. And as I said, this clamp or this C clamp is the perfect size. I didn't say that, but I am now. In fact, I'm gonna spray. I'm gonna spray the the piston with some brake clean, and then I'm gonna hit it with some blaster. The innards in this looks, uh, they, it looks pretty good. Everything's clean. Everything's really good. It's not rusted anywhere. So let's hit it with the blaster. We just want to get some lubricant around the piston and the seals in there. So when we push this down in, any, uh, any debris that might be caught on the piston has a less likely chance of hurting the inner piston seal. So we don't have to rebuild this this bad boy. Oh yeah. Our piston's going right home now. As you can see, I'm just gently twisting the C-clamp to allow the piston to go down at a relatively uh, even. I'm going to move it to the other side so I'm not putting too much pressure on one side of the of the piston and so it don't get down there cockeyed. Uh, you would have that problem in a, in a caliper that had bad seals or a worn out uh, piston. It would just flop around in there. But this one seems to be compressing in a uniform a uniformed fashion uh, and it doesn't it's not hanging up no problems now I don't know how far but figuring just far enough to get the pads and get the pads over the caliper and get it back on because then we're going to have to bleed which will take up any slack all right so let's go ahead and clean all the blaster out of here that we need to uh, clean up our surface or lubricate our uh, brake our brake piston so the last thing we need is oil or grease on our brake pads This piston is in terrific shape. As I said a couple times, actually, no, I didn't because I had to refilm this episode. Uh, this, oh yeah, I did in the in in the second episode, powder coating time. I I did say that this Odyssey was garage kept, heated garage kept. So it's actually not surprising to me that this uh, this uh, caliper is in as good of shape that it is. And I don't feel any kind of way about wiping this thing down with uh, this rag because it is coated with lubricant, so it'll protect, uh, coat everything that I'm wiping. And I haven't even taken the pads out of the box yet, so they don't have any uh, danger of getting uh, any oil or lubricants on them. 
All right. Let's go ahead and wipe our bracket real quick. Just to say we put eyes on it, you know? To me, that's the most important thing, getting eyes on everything. Uh, so you know where the, what's wearing, where it's wearing, how it's wearing, if anything's close to breaking, inspect for cracks. Because as I said, brakes on this machine are uber important. Uh, what is it, Jake Paul? Uber lit, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in the words of words of Mortsky, this is good enough for the girls we date. Yeah, I want to give a big shout out to those guys. Uh, you know, all the uh, Vice Grip garages out there, even Tavarish, Wrench Every Day, Jared, all those guys. Uh, you know, put in fabrication. Uh, those guys really gave me the motivation. Like they're out there wrenching every day. They all started in a you know crap box garage, and they wish for bigger and better things. I just want to ride my Odyssey, so. All right, let's open up our brand new centered brake pads. It's a set of two. As you can see, very tiny, very small, uh, very heavy, very well made. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if these weren't the original Honda Honda brake pads. I wouldn't be surprised. So let's see if there's any different way. See if there's a difference in how you put these in. Because I don't know. I don't know if this they sit down inside that? I don't think they do. Oh, that's just a... Okay, so when you get them in there, we want to put our our big, long, or wait a second, I didn't get our, uh, don't worry about it, um, our big, long, there it is. This bad guy. This bad dude right here. Oops. So we want to get these brake pads in there and centered. So when we put this put this bolt in here, uh, which rolled here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, you want to look down look down through this hole right here and you'll be able to see whether your brake pads are lined up or not and then when they are just slide that bolt back in uh, give her a little tap if you have to which I have to I can't find our trusty hammer even though it's probably sitting here right in front of my face which it is Oh, let me see what's going on in there. Okay. In fact, I know a good way to do this. Oh, you got to kind of push down on them at the same time. Well, maybe I have um maybe I have the wrong one in the front and the wrong one in the back. Let me see. Yep, that's what happened. So, they won't fit if you try to put them in the wrong, if you try to put them in the wrong spot, they will not fit. There we go. You saw me fighting with that, so that's got to be the truth. Okay. Let me 
back this back out a little bit so I can get our second second pad on. All right. Center it up. And this is going to go right in. I've got it lined up right now. Yep, just like I said. We are locked and ready to go. There you go. You just pull down and see you get a nice straight gap to put your put your caliper um, first you want to take your bracket, actually, yeah, now let's put the caliper on first, uh, take it off probably the same way we put it on, oh, that went on way easier, <laughs> sorry about that guys, I was expecting to fight, all right, Everything's going going back together way easier than uh, than what was anticipated. So we got these these uh, big the regular size bolts go on the the brake bracket mount. Make sure you finger start them, finger start them first. Don't just throw them in the hole and hit them with an impact. You're due to cross thread and really mess your stuff up. And trust me when I say that there, you know, there may be one or two people or maybe a dozen handful of people out there that have an abundance of parts. But you're going to pay out the you're going to pay out the nose for them and they're very limited. So please please uh Oh, yeah. Uh, please take care of your parts. Where was this from? What was this from? Does anybody know? Oh, that's our... <laughs> Woo! That was our brake bolt, but then I lost our... I lost our uh, washer. Uh oh. Did any of you got? I heard it. I heard it. It couldn't have gone too far, but I know how washers and parts are. They disappear real easy. Well, anyway, we'll just uh, we'll just continue. I do have washers downstairs if need be. But anyway, so as I said, don't go hitting your bolts with a uh, with an impact right off the right off the gate. Um, do do start them with your fingers, and then you can come in with your impact and uh, finish her off. As soon as you find your arbor that you lost. <laughs> I, as I said before, I think that's what it's called. There she be. All right, and I remember that they are 14 millimeter bolts. We still have our 14 right here. So let's go ahead. And remember how tight they were. This is your brake, so. Next are your caliper bolts. They go, uh, make sure when you put your, uh, your brake bracket, your mounting bracket back on, that the rubber grommets are pointing out. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. Remember that, rubber grommets pointing out. And again, you want to snug your snug your bolts with your finger before you hit them with the impact and especially with these brake caliper bolts or any brake caliper bolts go ahead and grab them and pull them in and out 
to make sure that they're actually biting because sometimes you'll be sitting there spinning not knowing that they're just spinning inside the grommet and not actually engaging the threads. You could actually think it's engaging the threads and then go put an impact and just, again, really mess your parts up. It's not needed if you just slow down, take your time. I know time is money, but we do these projects because we enjoy it. This isn't a hassle. This is enjoyable. You know, we look forward to doing this, so we're in no hurry. Like, we don't even have our engine back from the engine shop yet, so it doesn't matter how fast we get these brakes done, uh, we're not going to go riding today. But, don't be, don't let that discourage you, because everything we do today will be one less thing we have to do when that engine is done. We're just waiting for the text. Okay, we got these started. We're going to go ahead, we're going to snug our caliper bolts down. And last, we're going to put our emergency brake uh, actuator, I'll call it. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Everything's going together relatively easy, so we're good. This bracket does, this uh, emergency brake really, this does twist around a little bit uh, because of the tension from the, from the cable. And remember, this bolt down here you can't get with an impact or a socket, so you gotta attack it. It's a 12 millimeter wrench. I'm really happy you guys are here with me today. I don't have much going on right now, but I'm really excited. I'm really happy you're here. I'm grateful. Because at the end of the day, just to know that there was 30 people out there that cared enough about my project to say they would check it out. But on the other note, you guys hear this on all the other YouTube channels, but I'm going to tell you that 85% of the people watching my video are not subscribed. So for the other for the other 15% that are subscribed, thank you. Uh, but for that 85% that are just browsing, you know, it doesn't hurt to stick around, hit that subscribe button, see what everybody's raving about. All I hear in my dreams, people, my ears are ringing. I hear pss, 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 Odyssey Life. Pss, pss, pss. It's so great. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody's saying that stuff. But uh, Hey, Seth, it was good to see you too, brother. It really was. All right. And, it, and uh, because of the tension that's on this bracket, you don't want to go balls to the walls. Uh and start tightening the one side with a wrench and then have it sit on there crooked and hit it with the impact. You'll snap an ear off. So that's why you saw me hit it with the impact uh, and then also wrenching at the same time. And if you can, I was just stupid right there. Uh, if it's a six, if it's a, uh, a uh, six point nut, uh, bolt, use a six point wrench uh, just because of the simple fact of it would make it easier to not strip but everything I have are 12 points so all right now the only thing left is to find that uh, find that brake washer and now my legs asleep oh no uh, it probably fell in our little tool bump. Found it right here. We're good to go. All right, so last in but not least, we're going to reinstall our brake line. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to show you real quick so you're not like ignorant when it comes to 
there's a hole in that bolt. In fact, mine is completely clogged with stuff. So it's going to be good to bleed these brakes. In fact, that looks like, feels like silicone. Why there would be silicone on there, I have no clue. But any debris in your brake system is no bueno. No debris in the brake system. <laughs> All right. So on this bolt, or on your brake bolt, um, there's a washer on the back side that you must line up with your line. Oh. And a washer on the front side towards the caliper. In fact, let me squirt some of this brake clean inside this, uh, you know what, I'm not one for straws anyway, so. <laughs> All right, clean her up a little bit. That looks real good. Uh, not losing your washers. So remember, nut, washer, hole, line that up with your hole on the inside, I believe, you want to do that, and then washer on the back side, and then, and that one is also a 12 millimeter as well. So we got one of them on the impact. All right. So now we can put the emergency brake back on. emergency brake bracket, I should say, or the emergency brake uh, actuator arm, which you have to remove to get the, uh, and it's a 12 point, and I'm having trouble lining it up, so I'm going to use this wrench to kind of, oh, okay, there we go, let's see, So I got to take that off. Put the emergency brake down. And I don't know why. Let's put it up. Why isn't it going on? Oh, we just had to... I'm a little confused right now. why this isn't going on but give me a second and we're certain to find out anyway we seem to have oh okay we can put that back on not something we have to take apart. It's the boot that goes around the emergency brake. Uh, oh, there we go. This is how you adjust for uh, 
um, the play, as they say. There we go, we got her in. Now we can tighten down the bolt that holds the arm. And then the bolt that keeps that one in place. So now, we're ready to bleed. We got a strip bolt on our master cylinder, so we're just uh, giving it a little bit of screw treatment, that's what I call it. A little bit of blaster, a little bit of hammer, and then a little bit of down pressure and a twist and still nothing yet in fact I sometimes like to put the vice grips on the bottom of the screwdriver so when I push down I have an alternate source of leverage so let's give that a whirl No, negative. The screw's all the way done. Yep. Yep, that screw is all the way done, gentlemen. So, I guess we are going to have to get a drill bit which I don't have one, and see where it goes. All right, guys, well, as you see, we're in the Odyssey Life workshop. Uh, the last clip there you saw, uh, we had a stripped screw uh, on our master cylinder, and no matter what I tried up to, but not including, as I said, it, right at the end of the clip, drilling it out or getting a drill bit, um, I wasn't able to get that screw out, and unfortunately, all the videos and uh, research that I did uh, involved destroying the uh, that cap. Now, I'm hoping I don't have to, but I did find that our good buddy over at Odd ATV does have a NOS, uh, yeah, master cylinder cap. Uh, so I'll be already placing an order for one of those on eBay. So uh, hopefully Odd ATV will get that in the mail for me as soon as possible because I really would like to get our brakes bled and get that job wrapped up. Um, but I will definitely bring you along for that. And don't forget, uh, if this is the kind of stuff you like to see, click the like and subscribe button and uh, tune in next week for the next episode. I'm pretty sure we're going to be cutting apart our gas tank and getting that taken care of. And in the meantime, if we do get the... Uh, the new master cylinder cap uh, in time uh, I will post a short of me bleeding the brakes all right until next week this was Odyssey life I'm Bernie this is our stuff this is what we do we're happy you are here we're grateful that you're here and we hope more of you come around show up kick back and join us for the ride all right man be grateful for another day alive this is Odyssey life out